Well, hello, free people of the Rocky Mountain region, and welcome to this Free State Colorado interview. Today, I'm joined by Carl Honiger, board member for the Colorado Union of Taxpayers, alumni of Emerging Leaders Council at the Steamboat Institute, and volunteer for Liberty Scorecard Colorado. Well, Carl, I hope you are well, and thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thank you so much. It's really interesting that, let's say, I go to the gym, and I'm watching TV, and if you've done the same in terms of like just turn on your TV to animated channels, you've seen all these ads talking about open primaries in Colorado. Well, it's really important to understand that this is not just a statewide issue. This really is a national issue that's going state by state. Um, let's go ahead and start with the first state. Um, but I think that we should consider is our state, um, Colorado, Prop 131, and 76 group is running the campaign in terms of all those TV ads you see. So they've been hired by Camp Theory. Camp Theory really likes them. Um, they're actually used by a lot of people, um, if I'm not incorrect, uh, Kaufman when he ran, and um, a lot of people who have also have lost actually their races as Republicans here in Colorado. Um, so for example, the person who ran for Senate last year used 76 group um what's interesting is let colorado vote this is what's super interesting to me is if you've been around colorado long enough so they pushed for open primaries in 2016 prop 107 and 108 so back then and kent theory in uh 2018 there's an image on their facebook page of him saying oh look how great our primaries were we're so glad that they worked due to the fact that Prop 107, 108 in, in 2016 passed. So he's saying, oh, it's so great. So now they're changing their mind in terms of, oh, these primaries, they're such a problem. They're so bad. It's such a bad thing that an unaffiliated voter has to get two ballots, the Republican Party and the Democrat Party, and they get to choose. And that's just unfair to these unaffiliated voters. And so what they want to do is they want to say, okay, unaffiliated voter, you don't, you don't get to choose between your two ballots anymore. You get one ballot and then you have Democrats voting and Republicans voting. So it's kind of an interesting, like the whole open primaries of 2016 was to dilute the vote in the major primaries. Um, what, is what they're going for now is a jungle primary, calling it an open primary. And so they're actually going to dilute the vote that the unaffiliated voters had. Because it used to be the unaffiliated voter had the most power of any voter in a primary in Colorado. And so now they're actually going to take away unaffiliated voters' power by diluting it with Republicans and Democrats. And then... Um, Libertarian Party, I know, it might have been 2016 or so when um, they had the conversation. I was there um, about their Senate candidate. They were thinking of having a primary, and then that would require ballots to be sent out, and registered libertarians would get a ballot in the mail. Kind of like, oh, I forgot I'm registered libertarian for a lot of them. Um, but they decided not to. So really, the only primaries we've had are Republican and Democrat. They're going to dilute, they're going to do a general primary, just have the total chaos of general primary. So uh, polling shows is going to pass. There was a debate. I think it was Denver elections. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, they decided to have a debate, and it's the only debate that I've seen so far. And Jason Lupo, with the organization that opposes this, one of the organizations that opposes this, you could see all he talked about was election integrity and so this is why and i'm for election integrity in 2019 i was flown out by freedom works to i think it was michigan and they had a left-wing person present on election integrity on hooking up um, machines to the internet and the problems there are with that and so i totally support election integrity but the only thing republican parties talked about since this report that uh, you were nice enough to allow to be published on your site about um, the Blueprint 
Republican Party is focused on one thing, election integrity. That's great, but you can't have election integrity until you change the system to something that works. And so this general primary system is going to be horrific. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to help keep off candidates who are libertarians. Uh, the Ford Party is a very new party in Colorado. We've got the American Constitution Party is still a minor party. Um, and then we've got a couple other ones, like the Approval Party, et cetera. So the key is because it's first past the post, which is what Republicans normally like, um, most Democrats like it at the state level. And so the first past the post means that you can actually kind of flood your top four with money. So you can ensure, okay, Republicans usually win this seat, so we'll have one Democrat and we'll have three Republicans that will make sure get name recognition enough that people are only voting for the Republicans and a Democrat. So when we get to other states, I'll kind of explain how it works in reality, but that's kind of what we'll be seeing. And then the ranked choice voting will be um, for every seat that's, so you think of like a House seat, up to Congress and um, Senate. So we can move on next date. Yeah, just real quick on this, Carl, I'm really glad you're talking about the jungle primary or all candidate open primary component of this initiative, this Proposition 131, because I think, like you said, most people are focusing on uh, some different aspects to it, particularly they keep talking about ranked choice voting. And yep. there is the, the ranked choice voting component of it. But really, for the, the alarm bells for me, the reason why I oppose this or Free State Colorado opposes this is because of that all candidate jungle open primary. Where And just to explain it for people, if they weren't aware, every single person running for that for office that year will be on one ballot for the primary doesn't matter what candidate, what party you're in, unaffiliated, major party, minor party. And then those top four will proceed to the general. So like you said, you're going to get those people with the top name recognition, the people maybe you're, you might end up with three Democrats and a Republican or two Republicans, two Democrats on the general election ballot. So really that primary election, this all candidate open primary is going to prevent third party candidates from really getting to November where they, they have a bigger voice. You know, so it's going to actually diminish uh, the ability for people to to participate in the general election come November in Colorado in the future. So I think, you know, that's really the key component for me uh, as well as why this needs to be opposed and why people should really not not support it. But I think uh, a lot of people aren't aware of just how bad this can be and that I'm really excited for, to hear more from you about how this is tied to other nationwide pushes for uh, for this exact same thing. So let's move on to that next state here. So what's going on in Nevada? So Nevada is very interesting because there's actually been a lot of time that opposition has been able to organize and they just can't. They are not able to do the ground game, the grassroots needed to oppose this. And it's because they don't understand that it's nationwide. They don't understand the impact. Again, the Republican Party is focused on, in Nevada, election integrity. So actually, the Democrat Party in Nevada is the ones who have done the most to oppose this. Now, it's not enough, but so it was passed in 2022, which would mean that gives a great opportunity for those opposing it to know what the margin is and to spend two years messaging to get the parties together and their power to oppose this. Anyway, they only raised 146 in opposition and Nevada Voters First has raised, or they spent $900,000 so far. Um, the way it works, as you've seen in Colorado, is a lot of times you'll have a dump of money and then the, um, because it it's registered under like the TV ads. And so you'll see the expenditures before the raising the funds and then they collect all the checks from the different organizations. Uh, at least that's how like Kent Theory organizations usually work. Um, so Unite America donated so far like $200,000 and we'll see where the rest of the money came from soon. Anyway, um, it passed in 2022 with 53% of the vote, but Nevada is really smart. We should have that in Colorado where any constitutional amendments require two passes of the same language in even years. So um, as you can see, this is actually a very um, 
good example of this image. Um, Kent Theory just loves, as he explained, as the article explains in 2021, Noah's Ark Theory. Noah's Ark is to get people who are politically diverse. So um, usually what you're going to see is firefighters or, or uh, firefighter organizations, kind of people who represent firefighters, are always going to be fighting for higher taxes for your local fire station. Um, but in this case, he says, okay, hey, conservatives love firefighters and like um, unaffiliated often do also. So let's get like them to say yes on three worked exactly the same way from any of the ads from uh getting rid of gallagher exact same thing so anyway we'll move on to the next date <laughs> i know prop one i love this because um idahoans for open primaries they've raised 1.2 million so it's going to pass um again Noah's arc right former governor butch otter and um it's a republican complaining about the republican primary right so this is a heavy red state it is not at all like colorado it's not purple but again um i think i might have mentioned in past articles that a lot of this has to do with and the reason why it's this you're seeing all these states in the west is because the west is where you had progressive voter reform so colorado has always had like a very independent streak where politicians and um, voters have always kind of while they've been for women's suffrage because of the fact that women's suffrage was linked to prohibition um and they're i wouldn't say so much waspy but like very anglo-saxon protestant um in the early 1900s the progressive reform movement came through all these states and said, hey, let's get these primaries set up so we don't have these backroom dealings like they have over in the East. So the current primary system that we got rid of in Colorado in like 2016 was a progressive reform. So um, anyway, so that's actually in the discussions of these wealthy elites and United America is they know that that's how you can get these changes because a progressive reform is also the whole um, petition collecting to get something on the ballot. So that's why you're seeing Idaho, even though it's Republican. I love the way that um, this no rank choice Idaho and no on Prop 1 has done their organization, though. The state party of the, the Republicans went through and they found every single Republican running for office that year or this year. And they asked them to put out a video in front of like an American flag. Um, it's the exact same video, basically, but just a different version of, hey, vote no on this. This is a bad idea. This is like out of state money. Um, amazing organization. Like, I don't think it's going to work. But like in comparison to other states where they do nothing, it's the perfect way to organize, to get the message out, especially if the people you're messaging to are primarily Republicans. Like, if they're primarily Republicans, then get people in those party and say, hey, like, this is a bad idea. This is out of state money. Um, so we can move on to the next one. So Arizona Prop 140. Um, very interesting. So 6.9 million. Um, the way that, like, the wealthy elites and people like Kent Theory and like, America do things is they will run private polls and those so internal polls, right? Is what they're called, but they'll run internal polls and they'll kind of get an idea of how much money they need to spend. And then they do the fundraising in the back end, right? They get the contract, they get the, um, it's called a commitment. So they get the commitment from the donors and then the donors put the money in when it's time for go. So they've spent $6.9 million so far. Nobody has raised funds to oppose it. Um, so what's interesting is this is primarily the open primary issue. Um, ranked choice voting is really going to be possible. I think it's because um, 
they just can't in an initiative have it all set up to do the same thing. So um, again, the amount of money is just mind blowing <laughs> because like seven million dollars so far, like that's the amount of money you could do to actually in Arizona like elect a bunch of people to the state house. Um, this is not about reforming Arizona's elections. This is about Congress, right? Which is what the, the whole original thing of Night America was um, centrist project and Nick Troiano. He was focused on Congress. They initially thought, well, it would be nice to have like one independent guy in the Senate because with 100 senators, you get one independent guy and the tight like setup we have in the Senate where Republicans and Democrats are really close. They decided not to do that, and they decided to look at the centrist project was the House of Representatives. So um, we can move on from Arizona now, but that's why I spend so much money on this. So South Dakota Amendment H, top two primary. Interesting because like we've almost always seen this like top four, top five, um, pushed by people like um, United America and then the innovation, the Institute for Political Innovation. Um, Catherine Gale, but top two, so this kind of goes back to like a California style, but again, primaries, it's going to be terrible for South Dakota. Um, nobody's opposing financially. I'm not sure why. Um, maybe so veterans for all voters is like in the circle. And so they have ads that they put out again. What we saw here in Colorado with like the repeal of Gallagher, it's all this astroturfing. So veterans for all voters, they astroturf in these different states. And so like they had an October update where they've got an example of ads uh, for Nevada, ads for Alaska, ads for Montana and Idaho. They've got a proposed radio ad for Colorado. Um, so they're doing that whole Noah's Ark thing where it's like, hey, maybe we can't get South Dakota like firefighter organizations on board, but we can get some like veterans for all voters, astroturf them in, put some TV ads on, spend, I don't know, like we're close to a million now, I guess, on the their spending. Um so again, exact same playbook, different names, right? Top two, top four, top five. Like this playbook already been predicted. It's being implemented. It's going to pass. Um, I'll move to the next one. So we, we can look yeah. at the statewide, uh, the uh, nationwide map. Perfect. One, two, yeah. I mean, I think that's one of the biggest stories that nobody's talking about. So I really appreciate you getting this out there is that this is this nationwide push. So I'd love to hear, you know, Carl, what's the what's the purpose of this? Like you said, can you dive into yeah. a little bit deeper? You talked about the centrist project or this idea of kind of, um, you know, trying to change co the congressional makeup of our country. Like, can you explain a little bit more about what you think the, um, you know, who's behind this? What's their goal long term and kind of those ideas? Yeah. So what's great is I'm actually not going to talk much about theory because we have so much example from Alaska. So. No one two actually is the original ballot question because you only have one House of Representatives seat going from Alaska to Congress, which is wild. Why would you spend so much money on one congressional seat? Because again, it's not about the individual, it's about the system. So you want to change the system in the West. So no one two actually is a ballot question to repeal. So there were enough Alaskan voters who in the real world who had been voting in Alaska for a long time they um, have been active in different political parties they hated the system so much they collected enough signatures I mean it was all grassroots okay so it's not like the Republican Party of Alaska did anything it's not like the, Repu the Democrat Party of Alaska did anything I mean Alaskan voters only 15% registered Democrats so it's the Republican Party kind of like Idaho um, but it's probably going to fail. looks like the polling because the whole Kent theory people, again, they're dumping a bunch of money. It's really smart though, to get this on the ballot because it forces a conversation and 
it forces these people to spend tons of money on one congressional seat. So anyway, so I'll, I'll just focus on the actual facts of what happened in Alaska. So um, the current Democrat who's in Congress, she raised $7.5 million compared to the Republicans' $1 million. So again, it's kind of weird that if she's really that likely to win in a normal system, she would raise seven and a half million dollars. Um, especially in a state that has continually, decade after decade, for the last like 40 decades, or sorry, um, four decades, elected a Republican, right? This is um uh Sarah Palin territory. <laughs> um, so what happens is the way they like the primary, Kent Theory and the elites is it actually sets it up so nothing changes because if you remember the way that like in colorado we had um brian piotter as a candidate endorsed by um one of the former republican candidates for senate um he had a pretty good chance of winning in terms of like winning a certain percentage of the vote and kind of like splitting the vote um so in a jungle primary, they can flood to prevent a libertarian from getting on the ballot. So what they did is they had um, the top four in Alaska, the Democrat comes out on top out of the primary. Then you have the main Republican. You have two more, um, Nancy Dahlstrom and Matthew Salisbury. So Nancy Dahlstrom has a pretty good chance in the general because she's actually lieutenant governor of Alaska. So She's got name recognition. She's got a good record. She signed an agreement to drop out of the general if she's not the top Republican vote getter. So the Matthew Salisbury, who doesn't have much name recognition, he also drops out. And um, I don't know if he signed an agreement, but it's those, those like backroom dealings, right? Everybody who supports these ideas says it gets rid of the backroom dealings it does the exact opposite it ensures them so anyway so you've got four slots you have to have filled okay great so you've got the two people below who now are going to be elevated so you've got a um it's like an independent party um gets elevated uh, the alaskan independence party okay so it's a it's a state party there's no national organization like the Libertarian Party. Okay. Eric Hafner, who's a registered Democrat. Um, this is going to be unbelievable, but I'm actually not making it up. So he is a criminal convicted of threatening to kill judges, police officers, and others. He was arrested at a U.S. airport on the Pacific island of Saipan. Um, he's been sentenced to serve 20 years in federal prison. He's currently serving the next 15 years of his sentence in Otisville, New York. But he has a storage unit in Alaska, so he can run for Congress in Alaska. So he's now in their top four general election for the highest um, elected office on the ballot this year because they don't have a Senate seat election. Um, and they only have one House uh, House representatives going to Congress. So um, he said he's been running his campaign himself. His mom said in an email that the president has been experiencing a series of lockdowns recently, which is complicating things. Uh, he, he says, ultimately, if I'm elected, I expect to be re released immediately at that point. There's a federal statute under compassionate release. By golly, if I'm going to D.C. to represent the people of Alaska, I think that's a very extraordinary and compelling reason. My vision for Alaska is to be a place where arts, culture, and higher education are the mainstay industries, in addition to fisheries. He said before his prison call reached his 15-minute limit was cut off. <laughs> so... This is actually the way the system works, right? So, like, if this passes in Colorado, I should just start up a consulting firm. I'll reach out to all these convicted criminals in our, because we've got, you know, super max, you've got all these, like, federal prisons. There's nothing preventing me from getting these guys to register as Democrats and run in all these primaries for every single, like, office. And then we get, like, in the Republican leaning districts, we get, three Republicans to run. They sign an agreement so that only one will stay in. You drop out and you get the criminal who's a registered Democrat 
into the general and then you run a very simple ad don't vote for democrats one of them is a convicted felon you don't want to mess up your vote so anyway so we gotta also think about the way that uh, this worked in the past in alaska so ranked choice voting actual ranked choice voting is a really great way to have different parties work together or to have people within the same party work together. So like you could have um, a couple Republicans who let's say they are anti-war or maybe they're just like um, America first, right? So got a couple of America first Republicans and they can work together to say, hey, rank your vote a certain way. So the way the system works is they realize in Alaska, remember a red leaning state, only 15% of the states registered Democrats rank the red. So they tried rank the red. They realized Republican voters don't want to rank. They only want to vote for one person. So that's how Democrat got elected. So what they realized is, uh, and this is, I'm quoting from an article up in Alaska. So Republican cam- campaign consultant Trevor Jepson encouraged candidates to sign pre-election pledges, saying they would drop out if they weren't the top Republican in the primary. So if you look at the largest state house district, because again, um, Unite America, these organizations here in Colorado will try to say, okay, the House districts, um, so state House, state Senate, those are really important. And the primaries are kind of the ones that determine who gets elected. So we should really restore like people's ability to choose. So this is how it works in real life. So largest state house district in the United States, Alaska's district 36. So largest as in like, um, by size, right? Because Alaska is really big. This is the biggest by size. So you think that really it's going to be a grassroots, it's going to be like the most grassroots kind of campaign because it's all about who can reach the voters, not about like having an apartment building where you're just sending out mailers. So it's all about ground game, getting on a plane, flying to remote villages in this house district. So exact same thing in terms of they got um, the third place, um, Cole Snodgrass. He said, instead of trying to stay in and split up the vote going to the general election, I made a commitment up front with District 36 to drop out. So he comes in third place in the primary. Again, you would think you'd want to have more voices. Like, okay, you know, I like to have two Republicans. They obviously like have lived in this House district for a while. Maybe they have different experiences. Maybe they have different views that, you can rank the red, right? You can like all you Republicans decide, you know what? Maybe Cole Snodgrass, he came in third in the primary. It's not my first choice, but he's my second choice, right? That's how ranked choice voting is supposed to work. These jungle primaries set up with a restriction on like final four, final five. That is what is used to eliminate those extra voices. Um, unless you have the possibility of having an extra voice that's kind of like, um, uh, you know, swamp, you're thinking about rich elites. So that's where you might look at like a Senate race here in Colorado. Um, You might have like two Republicans, but you're only going to have these two Republicans stay in who are more likely to toe the line of what can't theory or these swamp creatures really want. So then this is also very important because Remember, uh, especially Brandon, like your libertarian listeners, if we think about being able to get these high profile races. So Brian Piotr, was he in any debates, any, any public debates? No. Well, because they just go look at his party and they say, well, you know, he's polling really low. OK, is he even included in polls? No. OK, so you look at the polling. So you go like 538, for example. Um, you've got four candidates that you could poll for. So the pollsters do not care about the bottom two. Why? Because in the primary, they got very low vote totals because you had people above them drop out again. So it's like you destroyed the the party. Um, The party is not the one saying, okay, we're going to restrict the number of Republicans going into general. It's the people on the back end. It's the wealthy elites or the people who are well-connected who make these commitments. So 
the Libertarian Party, like you've probably um, had plenty of discussion about this on your show about especially like CD8, right? So like Republicans will sign a pledge, Libertarians eliminate the spoiler. So again, the spoiler is still going to be an issue because the people who are running think about it and they're told by their handlers, hey, you came in third place in the primary. You still got a good chance of winning by just like going out and talking to people and telling them, hey, like, put me your second choice. So I'll, I'll still win as opposed to Democrat. No, they think the same exact way we think in terms of splitting the vote, spoilers, et cetera. So um, again, I'll go back to the, to the debating and the public um, profile because ranked choice voting should really change the system so that you get people who Brian Piotr, right, comes in third place in a statewide race that's extremely important, right? A U.S. Senate seat. He should be able to, like, have a public, be in a public debate, right? So you think with this um, general primary final four, that would be a possibility. Well, so again, I can understand that public debates in Alaska, they didn't actually include Eric Hafner because he's in prison, right? And so he can't, like, show up for public debate. So, and it's kind of hard, like, with a 15-minute phone call from prison. So the third place finisher, or the I guess third place um, Republican, he was allowed in one major um, debate. There were five, I think it's only going to be about five debates, public debates in Alaska for the U.S. House seat. And so one of those allowed the, I guess you call it bonus Republican to debate. Um, but for example, the first one, after the primary, the Alaska Oil and Gas Association's um, candidate debate limited the two people, the Republican and the Democrat, because they looked at the primary, they said, oh, because, I mean, again, these private organizations, that's why, like, if anyone has a problem with the presidential debates, right, presidential debates are like a private organization. And so they say, we can set whatever rules we want. So let's say a Ross Pro, Ron Paul, um, any of these other guys who are great third party candidates, the private organization will just move up the polling numbers and say, okay, you got to reach like a polling threshold of like 7% or 10% or whatever to even be included in our debates. So anyway, so they don't have to really think about that anymore. They go to the primary and they say, look, this first past the post primary, this guy who's like third place, in the general election, he didn't get 5% in the primary. So we're not going to include him in our debate. So four out of the five debates don't even include another person. So again, we've restored back to the normal, or Alaska is restored back to the normal way of got a Republican, Democrat, and public debates. People watch their TV. The boomer generation is the one that decides most elections in terms of uh, they may not be the swing vote, but the, the ones who watch TV the most, have the most time to get make sure they vote, and are the most politically engaged. So it's about TV and about the organizations that can do TV debates or TV ads. And so I guess that's kind of like my predictions are that like almost all these states is going to be adopted that are on the ballot right now. Alaska, the no on two is going to fail. And then if we just look at this map, um, basically any of the states that had progressive reforms like 100 years ago or more, um, so like, you know, west of the Mississippi, basically, that's where we're going to see future um, investments by people like Kent Theory, Night America. Um, so Wisconsin, they're not going to do the whole like uh, ballot issue because... Catherine Gale, who um, I think her inheritance comes from, so she's a leader of um, it, uh, Institute for Political Innovation. So her state of Wisconsin, they're, they're trying to get it passed through like the state legislature. So anyway, so we're just going to see like, you know, North Dakota, Wyoming, Utah, New Mexico, um, Oregon, Washington, those are going to be our next so many states. 
And then I don't know about like Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, but again, it's like no grassroots. It's all astroturfed. That's all they need. So you need seven million dollars, and you can just, you know, astroturf and get these things passed. Well, it's interesting, Carl. Yeah, it's interesting to see how there's this connection to to across the country. How it's uh, really has not led to the successes that they've claimed to. Uh, the proof is in Alaska, right? That they've failed to really achieve what their goals were set out to be. And those goals seem to fail here. So is this, are they just misguided? Are these people who are pushing these initiatives just misguided? Or do they think there's going to be some real tangible tangible benefit? Do they really believe it's going to create, um, Yeah. because I guess the argument they're supporting is this idea of, you know, more diverse, broad uh, conversations and candidates uh, around the political process. And then also maybe a moderating effect, like you talked about with some, I mean, some more maybe independent minded uh, people elected who are not so partisan, not so tied to their parties. Is that kind of their general goal? Is that what they think they're trying to accomplish here? Um, yeah. So one second. Um, because so I citizen um, is actually an extremely good book on uh, the whole idea of like moderating influence and like some of the psychology around America and voters. And so like, we're always going to have the political extremes and political parties often, especially like here in Colorado, so we have so many, we can kind of point to them. You're going to have those extremes. So you're going to have, um, not just like a right and left, but you'll have like, you know, more government, less government, stuff like that. So you have like Green Party, you know, kind of like the more government, but kind of more left leaning. You'll have like Libertarian Party, a lot less government. You'll have like Republicans, you know, right, sort of. Um, and then so what's interesting is they're not trying to create a balance within that system because they want to eliminate the power of the political parties. So what they're focused on, again, is Congress, because that's what started all this off and why they want to spend the money on. So if you think about it, um, people who are especially last like four years, politically aware of stuff like conversations around the First Amendment. Right. Um, so not only free speech, but like how Facebook and Twitter and such operate. Um and then ideas around government involvement in so-called like environmental initiatives. So basically like government regulations around fully helping the environment. So those two things, I think, are what started the organization Unite America and their funding. Because remember, this is um, Catherine, um, I, I want to say Gail again, but it's not. Uh, Murdoch, right? So the Murdoch family. So again, Fox News. So you go to the you know New York area, Washington D.C. They're thinking, where in the world is Colorado getting people like Lauren Boebert? Where in the world are they getting people like Sarah Palin, who, without ranked choice voting, Sarah Palin probably would have won the single U.S. House of Representatives seat. So like, they cannot stand the people that are being elected. From these states you see here on this map, they can't stand the people that are being elected from North Dakota, Wyoming, um, Utah, Washington, Oregon. It's kind of, you know, so-so, New Mexico. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess you got people like Gary Johnson, um, who's going to toe the line a little bit more in Washington, D.C. if he were to, like, run or something like that. But so if you think from their perspective, they hate the so-called misinformation that they uh, focus on. So they want to crack down on misinformation. And the best way to do that is to make sure that all the representatives who are elected from these different states toe the party line. Now, not the party line of political parties, but the party line of the Murdoch family. And so people like Kent Theory. So like Kent Theory is, I wouldn't say he's so much private, but like, you would think someone who spent so much money in like changing elections, like you'd want to know the kind of guy and like what he's about and what he believes about like so-called disinformation, misinformation. So the idea is you just need so many more people in Congress 
to be willing to pass restrictions on so-called disinformation, free speech, and then same with um, environmental regulations. So Catherine Murdoch, who has the primary amount of money behind this, she has only decided to be involved in politics primarily because of environmental issues. So she wants to be able to crack down on all these states where, you know, like Colorado, well, County, we've got, it's like the breadbasket of Colorado and like America. Like um, the problem is though, is these people and these farmers and these ranchers in Weld County, they're okay with having oil and gas production in their area. The problem is that goes against the ideas coming out of Washington, D.C. and New York um, and Catherine Murdoch. So that's the real intention. And they've actually been pretty like blatant about it in terms of like why they started this whole process. And so uh, that's the why. Interesting. Well, Carl, Carl, I really appreciate your time. Uh, appreciate the level of detail here. I think people would be shocked to see how big this is, uh, how it's not just a Colorado issue and how it's really failed in other states like Alaska uh, to, to fulfill these uh, goals that they were setting out for. So people should be really cautious. People should definitely be opposing uh, 131 this year here in Colorado. And uh, it's it's not going to be good. Um, so any final words here? Anything else people should know before we... Uh, before yeah, go ahead so it starts now the organization to create a coalition to you can restore um i wouldn't say like similar ways we do in the primary but like we need to restore election integrity we need to restore a system that allows for political parties to compete in a healthy manner we could do like approval voting in the general do approval voting in the primary um but We've got to fight now to do what Alaska did, which is the no on two, right? We've got to create a constitutional amendment to repeal this before it gets entrenched enough um, that it's the only thing we know. And um, follow me on Twitter, Liberty Carl, and I'll keep you guys updated. So, Awesome. We'll appreciate it, Carl. Yeah, definitely encourage people to follow you on Twitter. I'll put an X, I'll put the link there. So uh, thank you again for all your time and effort in, into this issue. And uh, yeah, let's keep getting the word out about how bad Proposition 131 will be for Colorado. Thank you so much. All right. Take care, sir.